Right, so I have been agonizing about this for many, many months, but I think I'm finally at the point where I can comfortably admit to myself and to you guys that I'm going to be leaving medicine for good. If you're among his 2.6 million subscribers, you know that Ali Abdal quit medicine. <laughs> but that's for a good cause because, you know, he's grown a very nice, massive productivity YouTube channel, which is bringing him some good amount of money. And so, yeah, he can comfortably quit medicine. But that's besides the point. I recently came across another YouTuber, also a doctor and an orthopedic surgeon at that in the US. And he's made a video which I thought, hmm, this is quite something. He just got me thinking, you know. So many people actually think about quitting medicine for various reasons. And top among them is actually the kind of stress and the mental pressure that medicine in itself gives you. I just thought that this video by one Antonio Webb, MD, is actually quite an eye open and I thought let me just make a reaction video to it. Not because, you know, reaction videos tend to do well, but actually because I'd like to amplify the message in his video. Let's get into his video. This is probably one of the most difficult videos that I've ever made. Almost 30% of medical students and residents suffer from depression and 10% report having suicidal thoughts. <laughs> At this point, let me drop my headphones. 30% um, is quite a great number. A third of medical students and residents, that's guys who are pursuing masters in medicine or postgraduate studies in medicine have reported depression and 10% report having suicidal thoughts. Mental health is quite an issue, especially when you're in such a high-pressure environment. And a lot of people actually do need some support. They need this message out there. You see, about one in five healthcare workers have left medicine since the pandemic began. So you can imagine the stress of normal day medicine, plus now the kind of added pressure that came in when COVID came about. It's actually not a simple thing being a doctor or a nurse in this kind of world. You might think it's just about the money and the prestige, but there's more to it than that. This is my second year in practice and going from being a trainee to being a full-fledged attending can be a rough transition for a lot of people. I mean, it's a time where you are essentially You've been babied along this path in medical school, residency, fellowship, and there's someone there to essentially take the blame or to answer questions or to just lean on when you need that support. And I, I'm not saying that that's not there when you're attending, but it's a lot less. You hold full responsibility for the patient. I found that to be very true, going from being a very busy fellow at a really busy fellowship where I ended my fellowship on trauma surgery to going out to practice where my practice was very slow. So that, that was a rough transition for me. It might actually be quite some stress going from the very busy schedule you're used to as a resident. And that happens even over here. Like, when I was doing my residency in orthopedics, you know, there's all those calls I needed to attend to at night and so on. <laughs> By the way, since I became a consultant, I've actually never been called for any night duty. I actually do much less work than I did when I was a resident. And yeah, it can be a bit stressful, especially if you are going to set up a private practice and you know it's like a business, you're not getting that work, you're not getting clients really because you're just starting up. I guess we all go through that phase and it can be a bit stressful. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a rough time for me, just being so busy as a resident and fellow, all of a sudden you look around, there's really nothing to do. So you're building your practice and this is quite normal. It takes three to five years to build a practice and some people go out into their first job as an attending and they get busy right away. There's no spine surgeon there, there's no neurosurgeon there, there's no dermatologist or 
if there's no one there, or if you're in the area that doesn't have your specialty, well, you're probably gonna get busy really quickly. Most other people, it takes time. True. Um, in my case, where I work with actually now two orthopedic surgeons, uh, I found one surgeon who'd been around for maybe three, four years. So I'm not actually as busy as he is because, you know, he's had his roots down on the ground and I'm actually just starting out. So, yeah. You know, going from this busy lifestyle as a attendee or a fellow or a resident and you go out and practice and it's pretty slow. There's the responsibility that if you operate on a patient, that's your patient forever. Oh, such a heavy statement. Actually, the responsibility that comes with being a consultant is a considerable thing. When you are a resident, like when you are training, if something happens, it's the department, you know, patients belong to the hospital. It's not like on a personal level, you have nothing to answer for. You are not concerned about anything, but the issue is when you become a consultant, you know, you make the decisions, you stand by your decisions, your patients will keep coming back to see you. If something happens, you know, other people will know, you know, this was done by this consultant. In my case, I've actually had some tough incidences, which might be fodder for another video. But yeah, so far, I actually feel the responsibility that comes with being a consultant. Uh, you have to own up to the responsibility. You have to own up to the complications that may arise. And as a surgeon, you're going to have complications. <laughs> that is true. I remember when like we were residents and sometimes you'd get a patient referred from somewhere or something and they had some complication. But then as residents, you know, you say, um, who did this? You know, this is by another consultant and so on. Yeah, in as much as a lot of complications are preventable, but the truth is when you're a surgeon, you will have complications at some point. I know that definitely these things will come. It's a question of how I handle them. But um, my goal, my motto is literally to just do the best that I can do and hopefully keep them at a minimum. Any surgeon that tells you, hey, I don't have any complications is a lie. You're going to have them. You just have to know how to deal with those complications. They can be very uh, challenging to deal with as a new surgeon because you're trying to make a name for yourself in your community. You're trying to impress patients and you know do good surgery and help patients but when you have a complication it hurts i mean it, it sucks the first few complications i had i mean i took it really personal and I, I would i would stay up at nighttime just thinking about it i'm like man i just can't believe that happened or you know why didn't i do this or what am i going to ne do next time to prevent that so it really makes sense um this wasn't really a complication but i remember i did a certain surgery which I actually came back home thinking about it and saying, I wish I did it this way. Uh, I should have done it this other way, you know. I actually did what is supposed to be done according to the book. I was fixing a distal femur fracture, but somehow it was very difficult. It was a very difficult fracture. Okay, came home thinking, you know, that construct was not good enough. I should have done this and that. It's something that happens. I can relate to what he's saying. <laughs> you know, these complications can really suck, but they happen. Just be honest with your patients and just see what you can take away from it and learn from it. Yeah, all the stresses that come with medicine can really get one into depression, all the way from being a student to being a doctor. Even when you think that you'll become a consultant and everything will now be very good, you might actually even hit this uh, trajectory of depression, even when you are a subspecialist so it happens everyone is vulnerable all the way from medical students to consultants depression suicide burnout in medicine it, it's real I, I i've never experienced that until about six months ago when trying to build my practice frustrated from not being busy and it led to a period of depression um, and th this video is not to discourage anyone from going into the field of medicine, but I just want the students out there to let you know that you're not alone. It's, it's, it's not normal 
but it happens and you have to it's okay that it happens because medicine is a very challenging career field it's stressful there's a lot of responsibility there's litigation that can occur so there's a lot of weight that is pushed on our shoulders and I just want students to know that students that you're going through medical school, residency, fellowship, and you're depressed or if you're burnt out, if you have those suicidal thoughts, I mean, these things do happen. People just don't talk about them. There's a study that came out that showed that one in five physicians are leaving medicine at this point um, because of the burnouts and because of the stress, depression. You might be depressed because of burnout, because of too much work. Or you might be depressed because of, you know, transition to no work. And things don't just go the way you hoped. Things don't just go the way you think. Just give yourself some time. Things will pick up. You know, if you're a student, you thought that because you are the best in the country or in your district or in your province, county, whatever, you hoped that medical school will be just a walk in the park. Give yourself some time, you know, just sit down, reflect, see what you can do. Things will get better. If they do not, quitting is actually also an option. There's so many other things you can do out here. If you get into medicine because of the prestige or the money, and when you get out like what's happening right now in our country, find that there's no job, you are not getting absorbed automatically into the workforce, despite there being a massive deficit of doctors, it might actually get to you because when you got into medicine, your parents, yourself knew that, you know, your life is all set up. It takes a toll on a lot of people. Just give yourself some time, you know, look at your options, try and work out something. It just hit me. All of a sudden, I didn't want to do anything in terms of extracurriculars. Didn't even want to go to work. Thought about quitting medicine. I had a I had a plan. I was like, man, I'm not doing this anymore. This is crazy. I, I went through all this schooling and training to be this stressful. This is not what's up. I would drive, go into my office, to my clinic, and just dread those seconds, those last few minutes that I would have just driving up to my office. Um, just because I knew that I was walking into something that I really didn't enjoy. But really, I was really depressed. This led to a lot of other thoughts that I've never felt before or thought about before. But it made me realize that this path, uh, if you don't take care of yourself in this path, you can't take care of anybody else. Hmm. Quite a heavy statement. If you don't take care of yourself in this path, you might not be able to take care of anyone else. Imagine when you're the doctor, and they are sick. The patient, they are sick. Sometimes I think like for me, probably this YouTube channel in as much as you know, it's not that massive thing like Ali Abdals and so on. Might actually be quite good for my mental health because I can get something else to do at some time and I enjoy it. It's actually very easy to get into that path of depression without you even knowing it. So yeah. It's always good to, in whatever field of work you are, get something else that gives you a bit of pleasure that you can spend some time on, that is constructive and, you know, can just help you put down all that weight that comes with your day to day. Symptoms of depression, loneliness, tired all the time, fatigue. At this point, you can actually pause the video and read some of these things. Uh, these are the symptoms of depression, just in case you're actually getting depressed without your knowledge. But talk to someone. Make sure you have an outlet to medicine, whether that is working out, traveling, spending time with your loved ones, some hobby. You need some out. And that's what we're saying. You need some outlet to medicine. Can just be a simple, cheap hobby, but it might just keep you going. You can't be all about medicine 24 seven. That's what I did when I was taking three weeks of call, working late hours for three weeks straight. And so essentially it burnt me out. So if you've experienced some of these things, make sure you talk to someone about it. Put it in the comments below. Let me know how have you dealt with it? What are some things that you are doing 
to deal with this lifestyle, the stress, the depression. You can also put them in the comments down below. What do you do to deal with depression, stress, and so on? And if you have actually experienced any of these things, how do you go about it? What did you, what was your experience? If you can share it, probably it will help someone else. So yeah, I also just thought it was a good idea to shed some light, open up this conversation and talk about these things because these situations are actually quite life-changing and they can actually even be a matter of life and death. And I've actually seen several people from my circle of friends all the way from undergraduate studies to residency, even to right now as a doctor that have gone into drugs, alcohol because of, you know, probably work stresses and related issues. Personally, I haven't at this point thought about quitting medicine. Definitely in the past, I have. I have thought about being other things. I have wondered whether I actually went for the correct career. I have wished that I had taken something else. I have had all those thoughts that, you know, if I was this, probably I would be much better off than I am right now. I have had all those bad feelings when I have lost patience and by the way, I have lost patience. I wish that things were easier than they are. But the truth is, we are in this, but we are not alone. You can always find some other way to just keep it going. That is it for this one, as always. No pressure.